Um, so yeah, I, I, what I thought I would do in this kind of uh, quick start, getting started with Perusall is use my course as a, a, a model and um, talk about how to set it up uh, and how to work with the library, how to create assignments and deal with any questions as we go through. I've got actually two courses open in um, in Chrome, um, my actual course and a sandbox course, and we can flip back and forth depending on what we need to do. So let me just go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to turn screen sharing on. So um, I won't be actively monitoring the chat. We're a small enough group, I think, that I will periodically stop and say, you know, are there questions or whatever. But if you want to, you know, break in and stop me, just uh, you know, turn your mic on and say, hey, Keith, uh, what about this? I, I think we're a small enough group. We can do that. Uh, so share screen, share it all. So you should be seeing my Search for Life in the Universe course, um, and. There are all these Zoom windows in the way. Let me move things around so I can move back and forth. So I've got this sandbox course open as well. Um, so in my Search for Life in the Universe course, this is a fully online course. So I really want to have this tool where the students can um, you know, engage with each other over the over the readings and other materials. Uh, so I'm very interested in, in using Perusall. So um, I'm also using the new collapsed collapsible topics format for my course here. So if you want to use Perusall, I would just say step one is to add a perusal link in your Moodle course, an ungraded link. And what this does, it will set up a connection between your Moodle course and the perusal system. And what it will do is create a whole separate course environment in, um, in perusal to match your course here in Moodle. Um, so um, I've already set this up. You really only need one of these primary connections. Um, if I wanted to um, show you how, how that, how you would do that, basically, if you just click, click add an activity or resource, I figured that this would be, uh, this is, um, an external tool, basically. This is a, a tool that connects our Moodle to this external service, Perusall. And we could have had it just listed here with the other external tools. <clears throat> but I figured this would be popular enough that it was worth setting it up as its own separate tool in the activity chooser. So step one, create the connection between Moodle and Perusall. You, um, add this, you select one of these to add. And if you click add, you really don't have to do anything but put in a name, whatever you want to call it. And for this one, I would recommend that you uncheck this accept grades from the tool for this particular instance that you're adding so that you don't have an item in the grade book that is just Here's our peruse all library. Okay, so um, open up the activity chooser, select peruse all, put in a name, unselect this. You would click save and return to course or save and display. Um, I will cancel because I, as I said, I don't need two of those. And then you would have a connection here between your Moodle course and uh, peruse all. Gonna assume that's pretty straightforward unless someone pops in and asks a question. What I want to do at this point, though, is just to show you, uh, we've got this external tool set up to automatically uh, pop open your peruse all course in a new window. And uh, I'm a little bit further along, so it 
it's automatically taking me to the assignments tab, but you basically would um, have this getting started page where um, as the instructor on the course, so you see here, I've got Search for Life in the Universe Peruse All course that matches my Search for Life in the Universe Moodle course. And Perusal is telling me that this was created from Moodle, that this course here in Perusal is tied to my Moodle course. And there are some you know, steps that they recommend you step through, um, you know, putting some specific uh, course uh, settings in, building your library of resources, and then creating assignments for your students to work on. So I thought um, it would be useful for this to go through some of the course settings to talk about them. And uh, I'll show you the resource library I'm beginning to build for my course and the kinds of things you can put up into your perusal library. And I've, I've gotten a couple of active uh, assignments already, and I'm way behind in conversations about the, uh, the reading and the web video that I need to, to look through. So I have to think about how I'm actually going to be participating in these conversations uh, as well. Uh, any questions at this point? Am I going too slow? I have a, I have a question, Keith. Yeah. This is Andrew. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if I've already uploaded, maybe you're going to get to this, but if I've already uploaded all my course materials, you know, readings, videos, etc., to Moodle, are they already accessible in perusal? No. So see, all of the readings that I would normally in the past have uploaded in the Moodle, all of the links out to web videos that would embed in Moodle pages, I'm redoing that to have them in perusal. If I want uh, to create assignments around the students collaborating to um, uh, co collaboratively annotate those materials and to ask questions and to and, you know, uh, have conversations about the materials. If, um, if there's just a PDF of an article that you don't want the students to collaboratively annotate, you have the choice of, well, am I just going to upload that into Moodle the way I normally would, and, and that way it would be available to students? Or do you still want to put it in the perusal library so that the student can use the note-taking tools and so forth uh, that we'll look at in a minute? So yeah, Andrew, if you've already uploaded all your stuff into Moodle, um, that's not going to transfer over to Perusal. You have to decide which of those things you actually want the students to uh, collaboratively work on. I just have one question. Yeah. Um, so if I'm teaching the same class twice, do I have to, there's no way to like double down on a, one perusal account or? No, but you can uh, copy materials from one uh, perusal account to, uh, course to another, just like you can kind of import materials from one Moodle okay. course to another. Okay, thank you. Uh, but uh, Alisa, if, if you really are really wanting to double down, you could combine your two Moodle sections into one Moodle meta course. Yeah, I, was, I was thinking about that. Um, I guess I'll see how the first couple weeks goes, depending on how I divide the class. But I, I, I was possibly going to do that. <laughs> but that's a good idea. That would save a lot of yeah. effort. OK, thank you. Okay, so let me just quickly go over some of the uh, settings. Um, we'll go through these in, in detail, maybe, because I think probably working with the library and setting up assignments are going to be more interesting to most of you. But, um, you know, a, a lot of this stuff, like the course name, the institution, will come over from the um, LTI integration between Moodle and Perusal, but it won't know that connection won't pass your course start date and end date. So you'll want to come in and you'll want to set these. Um, you can, um, by default, 
students would see the assignment as soon as they're created, but I'll show you when you're setting up the assignments, you actually can specify when the assignments are released to students for them to start working on them. Um, and then I, uh, you can also take this default um, welcome message that Peruse all gives to the students and you can customize it to reflect your your perspective on this or, you know, mention your course in this so that, uh, you know, feels like the um, um, students are getting a more, you know, cu customized experience for your course. Um, I think you will want to decide how you're going to work on grades between Perusall and Moodle. And um, so uh, when you set up uh, assignments, as we'll talk about, there is an algorithm that um, the fine folks at Harvard have put together for this, this platform that will evaluate students' engagement, participation, contributions to the conversations and so forth, and will come up with a um, calculated grade on how well they've done on that assignment. You can override that. You can also control whether that grade goes back to the Moodle gradebook automatically or only after you sync them. Or in my case, I'm actually probably most of the time not going to have the grades go straight from uh, peruse all to my Moodle gradebook because um, I'm grading students on every activity as either they, they, they met the specifications for the activity and they get full credit or they didn't meet the specifications and they get no credit. So I'm going to have in my little grade book lots of ones and zeros that I'm going to kind of manually move over. Uh, so there's, there's that on general. Access you don't need to worry about because your students are all going to be coming in through Moodle. Um, grouping. Um, by default, um, peruse all will break your, your course, if you have a large course, into smaller collaboration groups. And um, I, you don't see that because I've manually overwrite it, overwritten that, but um, the research that they've done is that groups of around 20 or so, anywhere from 10 to 40, are, are best for this kind of collaborative annotation. I was on a workshop, um, perusal workshop, where there were like 300 people from across the country who were on the workshop, and uh, they didn't split it up into different groups. And so all 300 of us were annotating this, this short little article. It was kind of a zoo. Um, I've got 66 students in my course now. So I'm breaking them up into four groups of around 16. So I am, and I realize I'm going to have to blur some names here. I am manually assigning students to groups in Cruise All to uh, match up with the four groups that I've, I've set up in Moodle. Uh, so there's that. Um, Scoring, I mean, if you don't, if you want to just allow Perusal to do it automatically, uh, you know, tell Perusal your estimated uh, enrollment. Like I could say, I could have said, I've got 60 students, I want uh, groups of around 15, and Perusal would have automatically assigned students um, across four groups. Um, here's what um, uh, Shaka was mentioning a little bit earlier. They, um, by default, um, Perusal is set up to only uh, score the actual annotations that students um, make on the article or on the web video or on the web page or whatever you've got in your library. But they actually recommend this holistic um, approach, which not, in, not only includes their uh, algorithm scoring, well, did they, how many annotations did they do it, in each of the annotations? Was there good content and so forth? But they also improve, uh, 
include other things like, um, are there annotations, are, is a student's annotation scattered across the, the resource? Or did the student just come in and put seven annotations on paragraph one and leave, right? Uh, so are they engaging with the whole article? Are they um, coming back multiple times? Are they uh, spending time actually reading and annotating? Are they adding comments to the article that is generating conversation by other uh, members of their reading group? Are, um, are their comments being uh, voted up uh, as, as uh, being identified as, as valuable, beneficial uh, uh, comments or not? There's all, all of these other um, components are taken into account by the grading algorithm if you select holistic. And if you do, you not only have uh, all of these other components uh, taken into account, but if you think that, you know, active reading target is very important to you, you can actually, you know, take that slider and move this, uh, make this a component more important. I have just, uh, I've selected holistic rather than just score the individual annotations, but I've just kept the, um, the defaults for now. I don't have enough experience to know, well, do I want to have uploading, uh, upvoting uh, be a smaller or larger component? Okay, so there's that. Um, under advanced, uh, the default score range is zero to two. You know, so individual annotations get a zero or a one or a two. I set it to be zero to 10 because I was initially thinking, well, I'll have these scores on a 10 point scale and um, then I can map that into ones and zeros. They either succeeded or they didn't succeed. Um, but I, you know, I haven't played around with that a lot. Um, here's where you can control whether you uh, automatically sync the grades back to the LMS, or so that, that means as soon as as soon as the algorithm scores a student, you know, the assignment is done, the, st the student gets scored, that um, grade would automatically go back to the grade book in Moodle or you can control that process. In my case, I'm gonna do this manually because I'm a glutton for punishment. So I'm not gonna sync the grades back. Um, by default, assignment reminders are enabled. So if, um, like I had these two assignments for the students to work on from Monday to Wednesday this week. And so last night, probably a lot of us students who hadn't started on doing any annotation got uh, an email from the Perusal system uh, saying, hey, don't forget, you've got this to work on. So you can look through you know, some of these advanced settings and um, um, decide what makes most sense for you. I'm going to stop sharing for a little bit so I can see people's faces, although everyone's turned their cameras off. Um, but uh, any questions on those course settings? I found um, the some of the guys that were on, sorry, now I'm like actually got a second screen, so I'm like looking at you, Keith, but I'm not looking at this yeah, right that's camera. Fine. Anyway, um, so I just went through a lot of their documentation and I actually chose to use the um, the kind of below expectations, meet expectations, you know, exceeds them just, especially for this semester. And, you know, for me with the students, the most important thing, which is what I weighted most heavily um, was reading. But I, I think I also, whether it was you or something else I read, um, just, you know, I feel guilty about the algorithm, like I said, but there are many different ways for students to still obtain full credit even if they don't read everything, right? That there are these multiple ways. And I thought that's really, that's really great because, you know, they don't have to get all the way to the end it, to it, is, but they could have written four paragraphs in response to other people, right? So um, I found that really, really helpful. Yeah, I, I appreciate that comment because, you know, I, one way I look at this is a, a tool to encourage students to, 
uh, engage with the materials, engage with each other, spend time on task. And, uh, you know, the whole idea is uh, to help them make meaning from the materials we want them to work with. If I had, uh, you know, put up a PDF in Moodle, hopefully the student downloads it and reads it. Hopefully, you know, maybe they make notes on it or maybe they think about it. But um, this seems to be a much more active way to engage students with, with the readings. So, but yeah, like, like, like Shaka said, you can, you can look over those holistic criteria and see, you know, what makes most sense, what, what speaks to you the most. Keith, can I ask two questions? Sure. Uh, one is, they're both pretty uh, beginner questions. One is the library um, is asking us to like for any interlibrary loan articles to use PDFs that are easy proxy rather than from our hard drive. Can we do easy proxy with this or, or will we be mostly using PDFs from our hard drives for um, the interlibrary loan articles? So the reason, well, you're, you're talking about library database material rather than interlibrary loan. Well, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Sorry, my mistake. Yeah. Right. So one advantage to, if you find an article in one of the library databases, um, they would prefer that you, the librarians would recommend that you link to that, you know, get the permalink to that resource and put that permalink in your Moodle course for a couple of reasons. Um, that provides alternate, many of those resources provide alternate form, form relations of the, of the article. Some will provide text-to-speech. Um, if you download the PDF, um, you know, you might, you might lose some of that. If you're going to use that reading and perusal, though, you're going to have to download the PDF and upload the PDF because you can't just link fr from the perusal library to that, well, I don't know. I've, I haven't tried. I haven't tried running a permalink through the library acquisition function here. But I suspect that most of those permalinks are going to require a purchase login, and the perusal platform is not going to have that login. So that was one question. Uh, yeah, the, the second question was, I haven't used it yet. Um, so thanks for doing this. And I really appreciate it. Um, you just did the one link to peruse all. And then you've got that P on week one or two or whatever. And then you upload the paper, the, the readings to peruse all within the weekly structure peruse all and it automatically reflects that. In well, no, I, I upload the materials in the perusal and organize them here in the library, and I'll talk about that in a minute. And then... Sorry to jump the gun. No, that's okay. But once you've got the resources in the library, then you create assignments in perusal, and you link, uh, like, these two assignments are for week one in my course. I would create a separate perusal assignment activities in my Moodle course in week one that correspond to these assignments in, in Perusal. So we'll, we'll take a look at both of those. Uh, I, think, I think I can go through uh, the library uh, issues pretty quickly. Uh, I'm pretty compulsive about my organization. So I've organized uh, folders and folders of folders within um, my perusal library to correspond to the units and topics that I'm covering in my course. Uh, I have not populated the later units yet. I just started putting stuff in for general materials. Um, um, I've got here are a couple of uh, websites that I've taken snapshots of for the uh, library for this topic here. Under general materials, I've got um, a, you know a multi-chapter PDF that was uh, openly available that I downloaded and put up into here. 
Um, there are these graphic novels that I thought might engage some students, and some of them I might actually create assignments around. Um, um, University of Edinburgh has an introduction to astrobiology course where all of the um, lectures for that course are available on YouTube um, as openly licensed. So I have captured those here. So, I mean, here are the different kinds of, of uh, items you can put into your library. You can use folders as I've shown here. You can, um, like I said, like they say, there's over 200,000 titles from publishers that are in the perusal catalog. So if you're using a commercial a publisher text for your course and um, it's in the library here, you can add a textbook from their library. It will show up as a resource in your perusal library that you can build annotation assignments around. And students can actually purchase the text right through this perusal link. And publishers are apparently very Happy to work with Perusal. If, they, if there's a title that's not in the library that you're interested in using, there's a, a form at the Perusal site that will allow you to say, hey, can you get this textbook? And um, it seems like publishers are very happy to have uh, yet another way to sell their textbooks. So they're pretty. Um, they seem to be pretty uh, engaged with, with getting additional text in. I haven't used a commercial textbook for a long time, um, but I do use some openly licensed uh, OER textbooks, which again, I can um, get as a, as a EPUB, a freely licensed EPUB or, or PDF that I can bring up into the, into the course. You can take a snapshot of a web page. You can upload documents, PDFs, EPUBs, Word documents, uh, you know, whatever you want your students to work on. Uh, uh, Lisa, here's this. You can copy materials from another course. I don't know if there's a bulk import, though, um, so we'd have to look at that. And one thing that's new and I think will be um, uh, attractive to a lot of uh, faculty and the courses we have here at Purchase is to be able to in, incorporate video resources into your library and um, be able to set up assignments where you're having students actually make comments and ask questions on the video and those comments and questions are time are attached to particular time stamps on the, the video. Um, so um, I mean it's just Click add and let me let me actually oh, here yeah um, uh, you can um, you know uh, upload a document from your Dropbox account or from your computer. Well, I also have my Dropbox account on my computer here, so I can go to upload a document, go to Dropbox and my Life in Universe course and. You know, here's a complete course in astrobiology. I'm going to upload this. I'm just going to let it crank in the background because it's going to take a while. Um, the PDF will be uploaded, but then it will also be parsed by Perusal. And Perusal is going to identify, well, are there chapters in this? Are there different pages that can be assigned as, uh, as um, assignments and so forth? So I'll click and get that started. And uh, what you will see is, uh, hopefully that wasn't a mistake. Uh, it, it should tell me that this, okay, yeah. So it should show me down here at the bottom that, okay, it's uploading. Um, uh, got a lot of processing to do. You can go away. Uh, I'll take care of this. So um, let me uh, let me just go out to YouTube. 
find a um, some astrobiology clip here. Uh, search life you know, it's a TED Talk. It's not that easy. But... It sounds good. So again, you could just copy that web address, come back over here, and uh, click add uh, video. Type in or paste in the address, click OK, and again, um, this is here. Um, doesn't really have to do a lot of uh, processing on on um, on web video because you're basically just pointing out uh, to the existing video. So um, that's quick and dirty, but basically, I mean, here are the different kinds of uh, items you can add to your library. Uh, are there, and you can organize it into folders. One, one thing that I find annoying is I can't have a folder selected and then add a new resource and have it automatically go to that folder. It seems like it always dumps it into the bottom of uh, my library. And then I have to kind of drag and drop it into, you know, what folder do I want this to be in? And, and there it is there. Uh, now that's not a good place for it. Um, so, um, you know, I'll select it here. I could delete it and I probably will delete it because I'm not sure that I want to use this, but you can, um, assign it. We'll talk about different ways to assign materials. You can open it. Uh, basically, it basically opens web videos into a player. And, you know, wherever you are or wherever your students are, you can be playing this along. You can click the add comment button and attach a comment or a question right there um, on that part of the video. Uh, any, let's see, where did I put that? Right Drag this back out here so I can figure out if I'm going to want to use that later. Any questions about adding stuff to your library? Okay, I'll take that as a no. So um, assignments are pretty easy to straight, uh, straightforward to set up. Um, I thought before I show you how to set up the assignments, I would just poke into the two assignments that I've got set up here. One of these was a PDF. No, this was a, a web page. Um, so if we go back to the library here, and go to introduction to the course what is astrobiology i've got this um, snapshot of a website from nasa i click to open it you can see that basically it's gone out and it has captured a um, copy of the website at the time that i brought it into the library so what are the what are the ramifications of, of capturing a snapshot of the website as opposed to pointing to the website? Not a rhetorical question. I'm trying to get some audience feedback here. Can you repeat the question? Yeah, so uh, if you add a web page to your library, Perusall will take a snapshot of it. What's the, what's the benefit of that? Well, uh, websites can be updated and you might lose access to some content if it's just a link or, or they, sometimes they go offline. Yeah, the website might disappear altogether. Uh, this basically creates an archive copy of it at this point in, uh, at the beginning of September in 2020. This is what the website looked like, and we've got a snapshot of it. Um, so that you don't have to worry about broken links. You don't have to worry about uh, link rot or link decay. 
Um, but you also are stuck with the information at the time when you create the snapshot. If this were, you know, some kind of um, page that was being updated, you know, each year with new information, uh, and you just reuse that same snapshot year after year, you're not going to get the new information. Um, So, uh, you know, that's, you know, looking at some of these things in the library. Now I've got this uh, set up as an assignment. And um, I can, I'll pop open the edit the assignment in a minute to show you what you can um, set when you're setting up the assignment. You can uh, extend deadline for particular students. You could delete this assignment. This would delete the assignment, not the, the resource. If I, um, yeah, I think, I think I want to open it. And um, you, you see obviously that there's a lot of highlighting here. If I click on uh, one of my students highlighted this paragraph, and I can see that it's uh, Luva, and um, she made a comment on this paragraph. Um, do you have? Um, it's pretty easy to to annotate and um, comment on text-based articles. You can just. I want to select the revolution here. I select a bit of text. I have the ability to start a new conversation on that. I can see all of it. I'm going to actually not, not put that conversation in. I can see all of the conversations. So, you know, here are uh, some of these uh, comments, some of these annotations. Uh, students ask a question, and Perusal will automatically flag those as questions. Uh, and so uh, here's a question that one of the students asked. It's right here in the article. And you can see that there have been other students who have responded to this question. So we open up this conversation. We now pop over into the current conversation tool and uh, try not to pull up too many names here. Uh, CG asks the question, what if they are alive? Then LR says, with time, we can do this. And then I can't actually see LL says, I agree. Uh, and then as the instructor, or if I were another student looking at this conversation, I could, you know, contribute to the conversation. And these, these comments could be text comments, just like we see here, uh, but there's, you know, various kinds of formatting. If, um, if my comment was, oh, you know, I, 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 um, I read an article uh, the other day about this. Uh, let me link that article in to the conversation about this bit of text in the, um, in the paper that we're commenting on. So you can, uh, link in web resources, uh, your, 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 you or your students, your students can insert images. So let's say you're doing some art history article that's talking about, um, you know, um, the role of the, uh, I'm going to embarrass myself with art history, but uh, you know, the role of certain uh, uh, families in uh, Renaissance Italy in advancing art. And a uh, student can make a comment where they actually uh, go out and, you know, find images of some of the art that is being referred to and bring those into the comments. You can assign students to, if, if it is a jargon rich article, you can assign students the role of you know, as you go through this article, um, identify some terms that no one else in the in the class has uh, clarified yet. Select those terms and come up with a glossary that explains those terms in in language that we all understand. 
you know, so lots of things you can do to direct, to direct students to how they're going to um, collaboratively annotate the article. Uh, so again, that's the current conversation, all conversations. You can um, you can star comments as you're reading through them, and then they will show up here under my starred comments. You can search if um, if you, as the instructor, have added a uh, comment uh, with students reply to that you'll get a notification and you can set it up so that those notifications come to your email or you, or you just find them in the notifications right here in Perusall. You and your students can bookmark, put bookmarks into different articles or, or resources. And here's that, that notes function. Let's say that um, I want to put a note here on this material. I don't want to make a, an annotation that I'm sharing with everyone. I just want to uh, make a private note to myself. I can click new and I could, I could make notes that are just kind of divorced from any of the text or I could have pre-selected some text and bring that text into the note. I can share notes with my instructor or with you know, specific other people. Uh, and you've got the same kind of editing tools. So uh, this goes back to the question, if you've got a PDF that you want your students to provide, you want to provide your students, you're not going to build an assignment around it, but um, you want them to be able to use these kind of annotation tools to make notes on it, um, then you can go ahead and put it up in your perusal library. You know, so it's available up here in the library somewhere, and you can tell students, you know, that we're not having a um, uh, an assignment around this resource, but I want you to read this resource and you know use the tools to take your own notes on it, so that you've got those tools available, those notes available to you uh, later. Um, any questions about what assignments look like? Um, no, and I think I, well, I don't have any questions except the ones that I want to answer, get answered before right. I leave. Yeah. Um, okay. cause I have posted three readings, really only four or five students just from the comments have, have, um, really responded so far. Um, uh, I did actually, I remembered that I did actually try to change something into an assignment. And it did give me an overall assignment progress, but it didn't seem to match what actually had happened. Like no one met the expectations, even though one student had written at length on every question okay. I asked. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm really interested in just figuring that part out. I mean, I can always leave the first three readings like not graded and just do it for the future ones um, if it's too difficult. Um, yeah. yeah, and then I wanted to say, also that you went into the not in the weeds here but your course is crazy Keith that's crazy I'm just glad to have, I'm so proud of myself for having included the full citations for readings for like the first time ever you know like I, I don't know how you do that uh like I said earlier I'm compulsive I don't know uh, but you know I've I haven't taught this course for a number of years, but I have taught it multiple times in the past. And so, you know, I, I'll have stuff to put up into here. Uh, just a couple of other things about the assignments. Um, there is this kind of dashboard. So I can see that half the class uh, haven't, haven't added any, con uh, any comments for this yet. Um, there is this confusion report. Uh, it may not show up depending on how large your class is, but I've got enough students in here that if I click on the confusion report, it will kind of highlight, well, here's a part of the article when there were just a lot of uh, comments and the comments were kind of around this, uh, around this topic. So, uh, you know, if you do have enough activity to generate a confusion report, that might be useful for, um, for knowing uh, some things to talk about uh, when you get together with your class to discuss the article. 
Um, just in terms of setting up a assignment, um, let me go over into my sandbox here and uh, open up the different course for that. Again, I've got just a bunch of different crap resources in this one. Um, so, uh, in fact, I've, here's an example of uploading a whole uh, uh, open textbook uh, um, on, on geology. So, uh, if I looked at that, there would be multiple chapters and so forth. I could go to create an assignment, and it's, uh, this, it walks you through this process. So, what's the content you want to assign? If it was just this uh, capture of an article, it will allow you to um, basically just, this is so, it's such a short web page that your only choice is to assign all the content. But if I instead select that geology textbook, um, it's parsed that textbook and has realized, oh, here's a chapter on minerals. If I select that, it's going to say, oh, well, that you're, you selected 34 pages for the students to annotate. Maybe that's more than I want them to annotate. Um, so I can unselect some of these. Uh, so I'll have these uh, 15 pages. For the annotation assignment, I go to the next step. Um, by default, it'll Prusel will put in an assignment name. You can specify when the uh, um, assignments due. You can put in instructions. You can specify when it opens up and um, how many annotations you're expecting the students to put in. Click Save Changes. It creates this assignment. And um, the way you would now put this into Moodle is to copy the full title. You just click on here. You get this notice that the full title has been copied over to the clipboard. And then if I go to add an activity or resource, again, I'm going to add a peruse all annotation activity. But in this case, I paste in the exact title that I got from Perusal. Keep this accept grades from the tool, and then specify. Well, I want this to be a ten-point assignment, and click Save and return to course. And then, when you or your students click on that, I'm going to close the my. Uh, Prove all sandbox down. When you or your students click on this, uh, they will go straight into the assignment, and then any scoring that is done here will transfer back to the grade book item in Moodle for that. Okay. So it is important if you want your students to. Um, have their annotations scored and have those scores go back to Moodle, that you do this process of setting up the assignment, getting the exact title, and then going back into Moodle and creating your peruse all activity with that exact title so that the integration between Moodle and peruse all knows that this should be attached to that assignment and score from that assignment should come back to Moodle. And then, of course, you can put this in whatever week you want, you know, relative to where, when it makes sense for the student to be working on it. You know, it's probably a good idea to have the link to the library up here at the top of the course because it, this is not tied to a particular week. But your Moodle assignment activities for the assignments in Prusol you probably want them to be in the appropriate week or topic that um, that they relate to. Wait, Keith, sorry to uh, go back a step. When you, did you put that assignment, did you open on the right one of the edit tabs and create an assignment or did it automatically create an assignment when you clicked on the uh, Perusal version? So, 
uh, if I've got Cruise all open and I'm looking at any of the assignments that I have set up, I have the ability to copy the title and I get the message that the title is copied. Come over to Moodle, go to add an activity or resource or wherever I want to do it. So maybe maybe this, um, this ass assignment belongs down here in week eight. So I click add an activity or resource, select um, Cruise All, click add, paste in the name so that I know that I've got it um, correctly. Um, leave the privacy setting the way it is. I don't have to change that. Determine how many points is this going to be? Is it going to be like a five point thing? Is it going to be in the, you know, what, what category in the grade book do I want it to be in? And click save and return to course. And it creates that. This perusal activity then becomes a link specifically to that assignment. Got it. Thank you. Uh, this is Maria. Hello. Yep. Hey, Maria. Seems like the main um, use, these, okay, there's two main uses. One is it's good for guiding reading and taking notes and that's private. The other is in more engagement and activity, somewhat similar, but with a text in front of you to discussion forums. I wanted your take on what advantages or differences, why, when would you use perusal rather than a simple discussion forum? Um, so you could put the article up in Moodle. You could create a discussion forum in Moodle and say, I want you to discuss these three questions about the article. Mm -hmm. Which is all well and good, but those discussions aren't necessarily tied to specific pieces of the article, right? Right. So if it's important for, if you're really, you know, if you're doing like an analysis of the text or you want the students to have conversations that are tied to you know, specific passages in a particular article, you could in your Moodle form say, now remember on page five of this article, you know, the author says this in the third paragraph on that. Well, students have to go back and forth between the article and the discussion forum and back to the article, whereas with perusal, the conversation is taking place right right in the resource itself. So it's great for text-based discussion is basically because I guess what I'm trying to get at is is that the main assignment you would use is here's your text bounce off the text in some way. There's that you could um, you could provide uh, a photograph and mm -hmm. have students mm -hmm. um, use the cursor to select areas of the photograph and make comments that are specific to what they're seeing there. Or maybe this is a, a painting or whatever. Okay. Um, and and you're having students to you know analyze or you've got a um, a uh, a brochure for an arts event that's coming okay. up. Right. We, my like we yeah. do a lot of talking about advertisement in my marketing the arts course. Okay. Gotcha. All right. That that's cool. That helps me uh, because I was just getting a little focused right. on all these long winded. It's a lot easier doing it that way than in a discussion forum. You know, uh, identify some aspect of this brochure and talk about what's useful, what what's effective and what's not. And right. you have to say, well, you know, down here in the lower right hand corner where they've got this bit of text and so forth. Whereas in Cruzal, you know, it's right attached to that that uh, item. Thank you. Yeah. So um, um, I, I just to I think I've been I think this is really cool. I like the the level of engagement. Just in since I posted the readings for the first one, people are going to town. You know, they are going to town. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and I love it. I think Maria, like for me, I'll probably just use this is for a cinema class. I'll probably just use it for readings because I think for me that's like one of the main things. I'm like, please read things yeah. at the end of the semester. <laughs> but I know for you, it might be different. It seems like it's very practical too. Like, because pe people can post, so you know, you could maybe post an image of something or a brochure, and then you're like, okay, there's a problem with this somewhere. Like, what's the problem? 
or like show me a better brochure and they can just drop it into mm -hmm. the conversation. So no, I really have, cool. yeah, I mean, I mean, the New York Times, frankly, is a big go to and there's so many cool articles right now about uh, pivoting in the arts management fields uh, with ideas for floating symphonies or drive in concerts. So I feel like that would be a kind of article to bounce off. Like, what are people doing and what do you think and how would you apply it? Yeah. So thank you for giving me more of those samples though, of what, how I could use it. Um, yeah, Let me just quickly go back into my course. I'm gonna share on the screen again, um, because I, I do think that um, a lot of faculty will be interested in this ability for conversations around video. So here is this, uh, it's like a 14, 16 minute long video, I can play it. But you see all of these little bubbles on the timeline? These are places where students have made comments or asked questions specific mm -hmm. to what, uh, what Cocktail was talking about at that point in the video. And uh, so yeah, I could, I could set up a discussion forum in Moodle where I actually even embed the YouTube video, since it is available on YouTube, in the discussion forum and say, you know, uh, play this video and talk about these things. But then the student has to say, well, you know, uh, here at point, uh, at, at six minutes in, he was talking about this and I had, you know, this idea. Whereas with this format, I mean, the, the comments themselves are time-based. Keith, can I, can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, Thank you so much for the, for this. This is, I mean, this is really exceptional. Um, and this is probably for anyone who has had experience with perusal. Um, I'm most interested in kind of doing live exercises with students. Has anyone had any experience with say like a short video or a short text um, where people are, are annotating together live? Has anyone done that and, and had results with that? I've, I'm actually having something like that happen now. So I found myself as I was annotating something this morning, there were students who were like right behind me doing it. And so I'm sure that there could be a way to just be like, okay, we're going to read this really short piece together now. But the, all, everything would show, you're looking to like everything to show up right away, right? Like yeah. it would be like a real time thing. Well, I mean, they basically, I was in like that, that webinar I was in where there were like 300 people annotating this article in real time. And obviously, everyone was in the article at the same time. And, uh, you know, you could see the, uh, the commentary showing up. Um, and, yeah, you, you, if you're going to use it for a real live experience, you'd probably want to uh throw up the article you know make make the assignment available have them go in through moodle to the uh, assignment you know, maybe give them a, a few minutes five minutes to start putting in annotations and then responding to each other's annotations i think what will be important is how you then draw it together at the end mm. okay right. yeah that's helpful i think it, it would just be about the timing and then bringing them back into the fold together. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. And, um, you know, as, uh, as the instructor, you can see all the comments like, the, like what I did. Uh, if you're wanting to score, like, like Shaka, you could like these first three readings where you don't, where we're not quite sure whether you can capture it into an assignment. You can go into that article in the library and you could pull up the comments student by student and, and give them a score that way. You don't have to actually kind of read through all of the articles and keep track of you know, who commented. Oh, no. Oh no. Yeah. oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Like I can see like how Moodle does a version of it too. So I actually did change all of them to an assignment. I just added assignments and it knew that it wanted to be the same one. Okay. So I would just convert, I think I, I didn't, there wasn't like a convert button, but I think I figured, but maybe I, afterwards I'll share my screen with you just to make sure. But, um, yeah, let me set that up so that you can do that. Yeah. What was, what was the, what were you going to say? The, the three, oh yeah, I can see it's only like four students who wrote, you know, whatever, like a right. whole other article. 
between these three. Um, but I can see who hasn't, you know, who has, who hasn't, how many times. Right. What you'll want to do is to, even those students who came in and annotated when it was just a resource in the library, have them click on the assignment that you set up in Moodle at least once so that Cruz all knows that they've come into the assignment through that assignment link. Well, when I set it up, I just um, put them in the library. So like I have, you know, each of the readings with the little P logo and it would direct them to the library correctly. They're able to annotate it correctly. Um, and what I'm trying to figure out now is again, just if it's converted. Yeah. Over. Well, once, you, once you go ahead and share your screen, we'll think, oh, I've got to stop sharing first. No, I'm not sharing. All right, let's pull this bad boy out. There was something you said earlier too about what the library wants us to do with the materials because yesterday I spent 90 minutes just copying one article like by hand, like scanning it, like making sure it was like, because there's a copy machine now in social oh, sciences right. like on the bottom floor, which is very convenient. So this was- And then of course I enhanced the text and I did everything else and then it was time to like correct the text. There was like 150 things. And I was like, I can't do that. I just can't do that. But we have to put things in that aren't available in our databases. We have to be right. able to do that. Um, what you could do is um, upload it to Moodle as a hidden PDF resource and let Ally say, you know, what's the, what's the worst thing here? and you fix those things and then put the somewhat corrected PDF up into perusal so that you can build an annotation assignment around it. What's allied? What is, what is that? Well, when you upload documents into Moodle, you see that mm -hmm. little speedometer score? Yeah, I do. With a lot of maybe red icons? Well, actually I haven't put them in the readings folder yet. So it's just through perusal. So I'm not getting a, a score. When right. it's just the perusal link. So anyway, I'm not fixing that one, but I just, I just like, it's one of those stuff. I'm sure other people would think about this too. It's just, we, yeah. It's like 90 minutes for one that still needed correcting, like more correcting. A bit less, that's a 70 time, minutes. That's a long time just for the scanning and enhancement. Anyway. Anyway, it's, that's figuring that thing out. Anyway, um, yeah, so I'll share my screen. Yeah, go ahead. You should be able to. This must be this. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this is the library. The, these are the readings, right? So, um, you know, and the the conversations are like ongoing. I might actually be in like the student version because I wanted to see what it looked like from from there. Well from their perspective. Um, and then the Moodle page, so I haven't decided whether I'll put the readings all in, like duplicate it. Um, I probably will as time goes on, but um, yeah, so I had the three readings and I just put them here and they work. I mean, is that, yeah, so <laughs> that's it, work, right? It takes you to the reading, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, if, if you've got your, your- It takes me to the assignment, that's perfect. It actually yeah. takes me to the assignment now, okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, as long if, if, um, if you're setting up that assignment link and something wasn't right, you clicked on it, you'd get your, your homepage for the course. So as long okay. as clicking on that in Moodle takes you to the assignment, then you know you've got it set up right. Are you guys reading what's on my screen? It's like perfectly appropriate to this moment. The apocalypse is not a futuristic one, but the very present and lived apocalypse. Yeah. I think this was written in like 1993 or something. Is that right? 98. Okay. So here we are, ongoing apocalypse. Yeah. Interesting times we're living in, right? Fuck. This fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just. Um, well, guys, I'm going to, I don't know if you guys are going to continue. I 
Well, actually, I'll stick around until it's over. I just have to finish this a little bit. Uh, I'm, I'm finished up. I will just say that uh, Ashaka knows this already. We've, I've, we've set up a um, social forum Moodle course space where people can post comments or observations or questions about using Perusal. Everyone who signed up for this session this afternoon, I'll just go ahead and put you in into that space. Um, and if you decide you're never going to use Perusal again, you can always unenroll yourself. But uh, I think it's a, we've already had some conversations going back and forth saying, you know, I've noticed this. Um, and uh, what, what can I do about this? So I think we're going to have a, a critical mass of faculty who are using Perusal that we might as well, you know, share our experiences. And I think this will be a way we can do it. Keith, can I ask a follow up? Sure. Um, is there, I wasn't, I didn't have a chance to check. Is there um, a perusal guide within the TLTC or should we just Google it? And or, or, or I guess where, um, where do you recommend in terms of particularly text-based, uh, like not videos, right. like text-based instructions? So we don't, have, we don't have a libguide on perusal yet, but um, I, I'll send around to everyone the um, workshop notes from the summer which has a lot of links to help documentation at Perusal. In fact, there's kind of, there's one page in particular that is kind of, um, uh, you know, all, all of the Perusal help guides from the faculty perspective. And I'll make sure that, you know, I send that around to everyone. But, um, I mean, if you, if you add the initial Perusal activity to, to create your course, you go into it, you decide what resources you want to upload into your library, how you want to organize them, create the assignment in Perusal, copy that name over to create an assignment, uh, an activity in Moodle. You're 90% you're of the way there, Julia. All right. Thanks. Got it. Okay. Well, I'm going to stop the recording.